Hi and welcome to the second video of our Demystifying Digital series. Now this video is about artificial intelligence and my motivation of shooting this video uh, comes from the fact that in my consulting and executive education work, the second most used term after digital is artificial intelligence. Now what we need to understand is artificial intelligence is a vast and developing field. It, con it consists of multiple techniques like fuzzy, lo fuzzy logic, probabilistic reasoning, machine learning, neurolinguistic programming, and so on and so forth, applied to multiple domains or functional areas like speech recognition, NLP, computer vision, and that again gets applied to multiple use cases in industries. The objective of this video is not to make you an expert of artificial intelligence, given the time constraint and the constraints of this media. However, the idea is to give you the broad framework in which artificial intelligence is defined and applied. Now, this is a basic course, this is a basic video, and I hope to, and what I want to make clear is this will give you the definition and the foundational concept of artificial intelligence and is not intended to build any kind of an expertise on the subject. Right? If you like the content of our demystifying digital series and these short videos, uh, click on subscribe, share, like, and comment as you deem fit. And here goes. Okay, just a second as we, yeah. Now, artificial intelligence, simply put, is a general all-purpose technology. A general all-purpose technology is defined by those technologies which have fundamentally driven economic growth over centuries, over decades and centuries, and has led to uh, significant innovation and transformation of global economies. So, a category that includes steam engine, electricity, the internal combustion engine, and so on and so forth. In today's day and age, the most important general purpose technology is artificial intelligence and particularly in machine learning that enables the machine's ability to keep improving its performance without humans explicitly uh, explaining how to accomplish its task. A significant departure from programming as we understand it, computer programming as we understand it. Now to introduce artificial intelligence, as I, as I said in my introductory minute, that it is a vast and evolving field with multiple technologies, techniques, multiple techniques, sorry, fuzzy logic, logic programming, machine learning, probabilistic reasoning, etc., applied to speech processing, national, uh, uh, natural language processing, which is like sentiment analysis, computer visioning, image recognition, and analysis. Now, what I want to call out right now is computer vision is uh, probably the most evolving area of artificial intelligence, and most amount of patents have come in this area in the last couple of years. Now, computer vision actually enables the ability of machines to look and perceive as human beings and has huge implications in autonomous vehicles, uh, in, even in healthcare, in medical sciences, and in also in parts of BFSI, right? Now, now, just to get the definition straight, and again, coming back to the very basic terms, World Economic Forum defines artificial intelligence as an umbrella of a collection of technologies which think, reason, and perceive as human beings and thereby automate and digitize a lot of functions that were hitherto dependent on human beings. A subset of artificial intelligence is machine learning, which develops, which enables machines to develop problem-solving modules by identifying patterns of data in, in, instead of uh, leveraging explicit programming. Right, and, and obviously machine learning has subsets into supervised, unsupervised, or reinforced, and you can look this up by doing a Google search of the categories of machine learning. And for the purpose of the video, we are not getting deep into it and just leaving you with, uh, with the basic definition. Now, when I look at, again, to simplify artificial intelligence, it has two, two kind of, um, um, two uh, major areas. One is about thinking, reasoning, and the logical analysis of data, which is called cognition, the functions of the brain. The other is perception. Now, the perception is the ability to think, feel, and infer from sentiments. Now, if you if you uh, have been if you've been using Facebook and if you've tagged your friends, and then a second image comes up and it automatically recommends a tag that is image recognition technology uh, of. Uh, of artificial intelligence. Similarly, vision systems are uh, being applied for self-driven cars in driver-assisted modules and also in full autonomy. 
voice recognition, speech recognition, and the conversational ability in the way of how we talk and relate to each other leads to a field of area called NLP or uh, sentiment analysis where the voice is analyzed and the tonality of the voice enables a particular response. However, the more obvious ones uh, is cognition and cognition is the pattern recognition out of data. Simple uh, applications that we see uh, is when you look at Amazon and you've bought something and there's a pattern of buying history in Amazon and Amazon recommends saying people who bought this also bought that. That is a, that's a basic level of pattern recognition. Similarly, problem solving companies like DeepMind, Deep Instinct are AI companies which are using deep pattern, uh, deep learning or deep uh, machine learning techniques to solve bigger and bigger and recognize patterns, which is very difficult, which was otherwise either too difficult or time consuming, or if you were to use it from a human intervention standpoint, extremely expensive. Now, at this point in time, we've just scratched the surface of artificial intelligence uh, in terms of its definition and some broad areas of application. Now on, I would like to take you through two areas, two industries where it has been significantly applied. Now, what we need to recognize is this is again an expert understanding, but I'll just touch upon uh, some use cases to give you a sense of how artificial intelligence or this general purpose technology is fundamentally transforming the world around us. Okay, so let's, uh, take a, uh, let's look at healthcare first. Right, just a second, yeah. In healthcare, three things are happening. There are healthcare AI is a big field. US dollar, two billion investments in healthcare startups in only the quarter three of 2020, which was the highest ever in that quarter. Uh, first is uh, home testing accelerated due to COVID. Second is telepathology. And the third is diagnosis, which is reimagining the detection of uh, particular diseases. And now let's take a quick dive in it. Uh, very simp uh, I, I mean, um, it, this is not a detailed dive in, but just a quick dive where we look at, you know, uh, rapid home testing. So testing, testing is a very important and an integral part of the healthcare food chain. What uh, AI is doing is making home testing, stuff like urine analysis and blood diagnosis, COVID testing, more and more simpler and the turnaround time has reduced. Now, if you look at Goss Medical with Celex, which is a COVID testing, it's a nasal swap where you just take a swap and put it on the Goss app and it produces results in seconds. Similarly, uh, urine testing, health IO, traditional urine analysis, dipstick, computer vision, and we talked about computer vision as an emerging technology of artificial intelligence. These algorithms analyze test strips and using smartphone cameras and come up with Typically in India, uh, urine analysis takes about 24 hours in terms of turnaround time. This does it in a few minutes. Similarly, the future of blood diagnosis, which is CBC counts, turns out results in minutes. Sight is a company which does it, again using computer vision and sophisticated AI techniques to turn around the results very fast. Similarly, if you look at telepathology, the classical workflow of telepathology is you as a patient go for a lab test and a biological sample is treated and a strain is taken out and sent to a pathologist. And a pathologist is an expert who then looks at uh, the strain and I, puts it under the microscope and then comes up with a report. Now what digital pathology is doing, it is through a high level of imaging, takes the resolution of the strain sample puts the image on the cloud and multiple pathologists kind of look at it and come up with a report. Danaher, Olympus are leaders in this field and global digital pathology is not small. It's about US dollars, almost a billion and expected to rise at the level of 7%. Now, classical diagnosis businesses, which were on the classical workflows are going to be threatened by AI. Now, the next one is personal, so we'll, there is another very important field which I want to also call out is digital uh, tele telemedicine. And telemedicine uses digital technologies like AI to kind of do the patient and medical practitioner connect seamlessly and faster. Now, as we move on from healthcare, uh, we're just touching the service of BFSI and personal finance. On the left, you see service robots, conversational AI, where you have a chatbot, and most Indian banks uh, are using this technology, where the classical conversation that you would have with a particular associate is, re is kind of being removed by chatbots, and these bots actually improve with the kind of queries they solve and so on and so forth. 
the the limited point that i am trying to make out of this discussion is the growing and Im growing field of ai and its implications are of most businesses around us and the understanding of ai or the basic principles of ai is a must do for managers going forward and i hope to come up with other digital technology videos in this series and if you have any comments just click on the comment button of, and share your feedback and happy to hear from you as we go forward uh thank you for your time and uh, watch this space for more videos